I was cutting through a city park late one night when I found a man curled up on his knees crying into the dirt. His body was bent. I could tell that he wasn't a large man, but he was warm. It was like this huge weight was resting between his shoulder blades and had been for a long time. I probably should have said something to him or offered to help him, but I didn't. You know, there's this girl alone in the dark, and I just felt awkward. My cell phone was out of batteries, and so I just fell back, and I watched, and I waited. I heard him call out for someone, but I couldn't catch the name. At the sound of his voice, a couple yards off, some bodies moved in the dark. They were friends of his, I guess. Passed out after a hard night, I couldn't tell. But they were sleeping. I could hear the breathing. It sounded like he was asking for help. He called several times, but no one came. And so he knelt and he wept. I sat there maybe an hour. I couldn't leave, and I wouldn't go to him. Finally, from a few yards off, some lights started moving through the park. I didn't realize how quiet or dark it had been until that changed all of a sudden. Blazing, bright, this huge group of people came talking all at once. They had their weapons drawn, maybe they were police. Angry voices, terrifying. But then someone stepped out of the group. He reached out and embraced the hurting man who said one word in response Judas I was getting my hair cut yesterday it was a late appointment so the salon was empty except for the two of us I love the girl who cuts my hair she survived two horrible marriages and is now living with her second boyfriend She's honest and raw like people get when they've lived enough life to ditch their glossy top coat. She knows Judas in the dark. I sat in the chair for about 20 minutes asking her questions and catching up, but then she called me out. She said, okay, Beck, you're not yourself today. What's up? I took a deep breath. I don't know if you've read the pastor's wife manual, but rule number one is never, ever tell people what's wrong. Not really. People just can't handle it. Pastor's wives are never allowed to feel really anything but excitement over new ch chicken noodle casseroles or horror over teenagers showing their cleavage or maybe empathy for AIDS victims in Africa. But my hairdresser doesn't do church so she didn't know the rules. My best friend dogged me over. I trusted her, and I can't get over it. I found out something wonderful at that moment. When you tell someone who has been betrayed by two husbands, a live-in boyfriend, and her whole family something like that, she gets it. I could tell she got it, so I kept on talking. Ugh! I'm just so sick of this whole entire world. Why can't we just trust people to be who they are? I mean, we go into this life stupid and sweet with these soft, open hearts, ready and willing to give ourselves to people, but then those same people dog us over when we really need somebody, and they use us for whatever they need to get, and then when they're finished, they just throw us away, and they don't even care enough to look back at the damage that they've done. I am so tired of not being able to trust anybody. She knew it. She knew it was true. And for the rest of my cut, we cried and we talked through how much life hurt.